Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in order to divert attention away from the Dominic Cummings affair, the government threw out its botched tracing programme a few days early and uh, to fully expected chaos and ridicule. Uh, in this video, what I want to do is assess the key parts of the rollout of the comedy version and discuss the government statement that the real one won't be available for a month at least. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the Thursday just gone, the government launched their new contact tracing scheme, all very hastily. And it's of course an essential plank of the crucial test, trace and isolate program needed by any country that wants to manage the coronavirus pandemic pre-vaccine without an economically and socially damaging lockdown. Fine. Except, of course, it wasn't. I'd already done a video explaining how the trials were somewhat chaotic and it couldn't possibly be ready for June the 1st. And then we started uh, getting the word from the government that very evening, oh, we're going to roll it out tomorrow. Are you having a laugh? No, they weren't. Well, they were with all of us. Then we started to get reports from contact tracers, you know, the 20 odd thousand people that the government have employed to get on the phones to tell us we need to isolate. Um, the people managed to, you know, to who, who have to manage this scheme. So some were saying that they hadn't received any training. What they'd been given instead was a PDF to read and then complete a bit of an online quiz. And I can guess at the sort of thing, because as a teacher, I've sometimes had to do these sort of things for training on a range of government initiatives, such as Prevent. You breezily scan some information and then you complete a quiz that doesn't require any knowledge of what you've just been learning in the first place. A monkey could pass it. Then there were reports of these contact tracers being told at like half ten at night that they were going to be working the following day. So they didn't know this. Then they were told half night. 10 at night, by the way, you, you start in tomorrow. Oh, really? I thought it was next week. No, no, it's tomorrow. Um, anyone feeling like it was a little bit rushed? What happened to the right measures at the right time? But at least they were given a few hours notice. Only that didn't help quite a lot of them because they couldn't log on to the system. And that was just the previous evening. On the day itself, the servers crashed. I know. Why am I wasting my breath telling you this? You would have bet your house on such an outcome. But it did. That was a thing. The chief executive of Serco, which is one of the major contractors of the scheme, no need to bother with who he is. People have asked me who he is on Twitter. It doesn't matter who he is. Needless to say, it's a moneyed Tory who didn't even have to compete for this contract. They said, oh, it'd be a complete fantasy to suggest that we could have got all of this working on time. I mean, come on, come on. And he seemed to suggest that this would be the case for anyone organising anything more advanced than the Tea Party. That was what he said. Anyone who's organised anything more advanced than the Tea Party would understand that, of course, you can't actually get it working on time. Please. Now, I can't say for certain, I can't speak for other organisations, but I'm pretty sure there are quite a lot of groups who do manage to get much more complicated things right and on time. You know, NASA, for example. Now, imagine one of their very few disasters being explained away by telling the public that the rocket full of astronauts was bound to explode on takeoff and that people shouldn't have expected otherwise. Can you imagine? Then the head of the programme said that it wouldn't be up and running until the end of June. Hmm. It's a little bit odd, that, because Boris Johnson last week promised that it would be fully up and running by the start of June. Not that it would go live in June and then build up to being fully up and running. No, no, no. Fully up and running 1st of June. Oh, well, perhaps Mr. Starmer can ask him about that next week. I'm sure he will. Um, now, this, as I say, was despite Boris Johnson saying last week and putting on mock exasperation when Starmer asked him to clarify the statement a second time just to be clear. So I... The, He's not listening to me. I've said it will be fully up and running on the 1st of June. Hmm. So apparently the wheeze is going to be like this because obviously Boris Johnson isn't going to stand up and say, yeah, sorry, I was wrong about that. I've cocked it up. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, that would be a good answer. That would totally take the wind out of Starmer's sails. I'm sure he's not going to do that. So what he is going to do, I gather, is to say, well, it, it's, it won't be up and running at the local level until the end of June, because this is the answer that's already been given to MPs. It won't be ready at the local level until 
the end of June. But it will, it is already ready at the national level. Is it just me? It may be just me. What does that even mean? So the scheme is operational nationally, but it won't be operational at the local level. Then what good is it? it, it the, the whole scheme is by its nature local. Uh, it, it, the fact that you've got a mainframe somewhere doesn't mean it's up and running. And if anyone believes that it will even be up and running in any fashion by the end of June, then, you know, I want to talk to you because I want to sell Buckingham Palace to you for a fiver. But that's just the embarrassing side of this monumental failure. And it is a failure. It's not just a political failure of trying to say it's ready in order to cover up for Cummings when it wasn't. Because, you know, that's one level of failure trying to launch it really, really quickly when actually it was intended to launch next week. But it is also a technical failure because it should have been up and running. I mean, you know, this isn't just about the government trying to rush it. It actually should have been up and running. Other countries have got it up and running. Why don't we? That is also one of the questions that was posed to Johnson by Starmer last week that received no response other than a promise that it would be up and running on the 1st. But there's a sinister, sinister, blah, sinister side to it as well. The fraudsters are already out with phishing scams, sending out texts with harmful links, of course, telling people, oh, you have been in contact with someone who's tested positive for COVID. You need to self-isolate. Click this link for further details. Now, yes, technically savvy people are not going to fall for it, just like they're not going to fall for any phishing scam. But... Such schemes only need a few bites and, and there will be a lot of people who will fall for it. And the suffering this is going to cause is going to be especially egregious right now. And yes, fraudsters would not normally be the government's fault as such. And these ones are not going to be the government's fault directly. But the, the, the issue is that this scam could have been countered, you know, because the government have a whole nation hanging on their advice. Or they did do. They've lost it now with Johnson sacrificing his credibility on the altar of Cummings. But before launching this scheme, they should have pus pushed the message about how exactly people will be informed. Because that's what the contact tracer is supposed to be for. It's supposed to give us a ring, right? We're not supposed to get dodgy links coming up on our phone telling us to isolate. We're supposed to get a phone call. As far as I understand it anyway, you know. So, but, but they should have been getting the message out there to everyone. How are you going to be contacted? to avoid these scams and told to avoid scams as well. If in doubt, go to the government website and find the information there. Do not click on any links, if in any doubt, sent to you via a text. They could get that information out there. They haven't, they didn't. Didn't even consider it as far as I know. So we have a system that doesn't work. Contact tracers who can't actually log on. And that's, it's, just, it's not just that they couldn't log on yesterday morning or the day before rather. They, they still can't now. There's hundreds still not being able to get on, at least just that we know of. A population that doesn't trust the government enough to download the app anyway. And criminals swooping in to take advantage. Not just the ones in government. And because this system also does need trust from the public, just as a final thing, even if the app did work, it needs a lot of people to download it. Not everyone carries a phone around. I don't actually habitually carry my phone. I don't. It's not even with me now. I, I don't really like smartphones. I have what well, I use it mostly as an emergency contact if I'm out in the car. That's it. I don't take it out with me if I'm not going to be out in the car usually. Uh, very rarely. Um, so those who do carry smartphones around, you're going to need a, a very high proportion of them to download the app. But they don't trust it. People don't trust it. Not enough of the population does. And not just in terms of the capacity to steal their data, because we are not using an anonymized version, um, you know, which is being used by a lot of countries. But in terms of their own income, there's a lot of people who are going to have very genuine concerns for their income as a result of this. Because let's say you have the app and you are contacted to say that you need to isolate for two weeks. Officially contacted, it's all pucker. You have actually come into contact with someone who's infected with COVID. So you can't go to work until at least you've been tested and cleared. But your company won't pay your wages for that time. So that means you're on statutory sick pay, which is form filling, potential delays and a piss poor sum that is not going to cover your bills. Do the government seriously think that people in a position like that who won't be able to manage on statutory sick pay are going to download an app 
that they know might tell them to do without their wages for a fortnight and might repeatedly tell them to do that. You know, they could get to the end of that fortnight, go back a week later, it tells them, oh, you've been in contact with someone else now. Oh, bloody hell. I mean, I could go on about this shambles, but at this point, there's no need to speculate. We'll just focus on what has gone wrong right now. Uh, we could, of course, speculate for hours about the problems that may arise. These are the problems that have arisen right now. These are known. And, and I've not even received a message on my phone from the government to even download the app. So that's going well. But anyway, there it is. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.